David R. here. Today I'm going to talk to you about this book, Prisoner of Tehran by Marina Nemet. Marina grew up in Tehran, Iran during the Islamic Revolution in 1979. Before being overthrown, the Shah, whose real name was Mohammad Reza Pavlavi, was the last king of Iran. He was corrupt and he silenced his critics by torture, jail, death. He used the secret police, the Savak, to round up his dissidents. Though people weren't allowed to criticize the government, they did have personal freedoms. They had religious freedom as well. Marina was a Christian, and that was allowed. The Shah was eventually ousted by this man, the Ayatollah Khomeini. The Ayatollah promised freedom for everyone. All the freedoms that they weren't getting under the Shah, they would get them under the Ayatollah. Now, this only lasted for about a year while the laws were being written. And once the laws were written... And enforced, people found out that the Ayatollah had lied. Now, not everybody was against the Ayatollah. A lot of people wanted this. They wanted Sharia law. And that's what they got. Just to give you some idea as to what life was like before the Ayatollah and after the Ayatollah, as you can see, life changed drastically for women. Beautiful women. Gorgeous women were told to cover up, like the woman with the umbrella. All that beauty was hidden under the hijab. Sharia law is strict and harsh. Criticizing or denying any part of the Quran is punishable by death. Criticizing Muhammad or denying that he is a prophet is punishable by death. Criticizing or denying Allah is punishable by death. A woman or girl who has been raped cannot testify in court against her rapist. Testimonies of four male witnesses are required to prove the rape of a woman. Muslim men have sexual rights to any woman or girl not wearing the hijab. Girl's clitoris should be cut. A man can unilaterally divorce his wife. A wife needs her husband's consent to divorce. And so on. Wow, who would want that? (laughs) Well, Marina was arrested on January 15th, 1982. And she was only 16 years old at the time. As you can see in this picture, this is four years before her arrest. Her life was easy. She had fun. She was happy. But her life completely changed after being arrested. Now, there were a couple of reasons she was arrested. For one, she attended anti-government rallies. At these rallies, many people were killed. They were just gunned down. And another reason she was arrested was because she conducted a two-day strike at her school. How this came about was the Revolutionary Guards were teachers. They weren't technically teachers. They were just spouting propaganda. And she was in calculus class. And she said, can we get on with the subject? And the teacher replied, well, if you don't like it, you can leave. And that's what Marina did. And other students followed. That's what led to the strike. That's what led to her and others being placed on a list that would be handed to the government, which would lead to her arrest. Eventually, Marina was taken to this prison, Evan. Evan is still around, and it's still just as bad as ever. She said the place smelled like sweat and vomit, and she heard cries of pain. She couldn't see anything because she was blindfolded. And... Once once she was inside, she met Ali and Ahmed, her interrogators and torturers. She was asked several questions that she didn't know the answers to. So she was cuffed. Now, her wrists were so small that 
the cuff w- couldn't hold it because her, her hand would slip out. So they took one cuff, just one of them, and cuffed both of her wrists with it and then tied her ankles to the bed. Once her ankles were tied to the bed, Ahmed used a cord and whipped the soles of her feet Foot whipping is common in Middle Eastern countries. It doesn't kill the person. It just inflicts a lot of pain because the soles of the feet contain all the nerve endings to the body. When she couldn't give them the answers that they wanted, well, they stopped the torture. And then she was taken with a med and some revolutionary guards to find her friends, and arrest them. Now, he knew the answers all along. He just wanted to torture her. So, she was taken with these guys, and then they arrested all of her friends, and they were taken to a spot to be executed. Her friends were executed. She was spared. The only reason she was spared is because the other, the other interrogator, Ali, came with a document signed by the Ayatollah himself, to spare Marina. Soon she found out why Ali spared her, why he got that document from the Ayatollah. Well, he wanted to marry her. She didn't want to marry him. She didn't even know the guy. She was only 16 years old. But he said, if you don't marry me, I will arrest your family and I will have your boyfriend, Andre, executed. So she had no choice. She had to do it. All right, so before the wedding, she had to convert to Islam. She was a Christian, by the way. She converted to Islam. She took on a new name, Fatime, and had to wear the hijab. This picture here will give you an idea of what the hijab is and other variations on it. The first picture is the hijab. The second is the chador. She mentions that one a lot in this book. The third is the niqab, and the last one is the burqa. Once she was married, she became Ali's property. And so on their wedding night, he ripped off her clothes and raped her. She didn't want to have sex with this guy. She didn't even know him. But he took control of her. Now, Ali's parents, on the other hand, were nice, They were kind. They were like the family she never had. Because her real mom and dad weren't so nice. Her mom was abusive. Her dad only cared about money. You know, they weren't so great. The marriage itself didn't last that long. After she convinced Ali to leave his post as interrogator, torturer, and he resigned... He was killed right in front of her. In fact, he was killed saving her. She miscarried because they were going to have a baby. And she lost her husband the same day, even though, you know, she didn't want to be married to him, obviously. But you'd have to read the book to understand some of the things that she was going through during this marriage. It was rather interesting. And so she was taken back to Evan. And Ali's father eventually got her freed. This was a promise he made to his son that he would take care of her if anything happened to him. And that's what Ali's father did. He was a great guy. So she's out. And after a while, she gets married to Andre. And they move to Canada. They have a couple kids. This is what she looks like today. As you can see, she's rather small. She's a bit older, but uh, she seems fine. She seems happy. I glossed over a lot of things in this book here, Prisoner of Tehran, but I don't have enough time to go through everything. It would take quite a long time, even though I really, really like that book a lot. I think it ranks up there with these two. And I know that's saying a lot, But I believe that this book is that good. It is pretty amazing. 
Well, anyway, that's all I got. Talk to you later. Bye.